Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Autos. So in this video, I just want to talk about one of the advantages of a Tesla over other cars in that they're powered by an awful lot of software, all controlled by this big screen. And because you get over the updates, the cars improve with age. So this car here is a uh, early 2014 Model S and these, uh, well this particular one is as old as they get in the UK. But this car now, we're now in um, end of 2021, this car looks nothing like it did when it was new and that is because uh, Tesla are continuously updating the software and completely changing the user interface. So this car now looks very different to what it was when it was new and it looks identical to a brand new car and because of that it makes the cars a lot more attractive this doesn't feel like an old car indeed on the outside um, the Model S hasn't changed at all uh, we don't get the new Model S yet here in the UK the new 20 or what would be a 2022 model um, but even those very latest ones they haven't really changed the outside obviously this one has got the black nose cone on the front uh, so the front does look a bit different but from the sides and the back they all look the same so even a really old one like this this is now uh, seven and a half years old still looks and feels particularly on the inside just like a brand new one. So the advantage of a Tesla is everything is controlled from the big screen and uh, a lot of people sort of say these are more uh, computer on wheels than they are a car. Um, so with the Tesla obviously this one being an old one there's very little switch gear but there is a little bit more in these older cars. So on the Model S you do have some stereo controls on your um, steering wheel here and we've got the voice activation and some um, buttons here that allows you to change the menus up on the dash and we've got a cruise control stalk and obviously we've got our indicators and um, wipers there these stalks are actually straight out from uh, Mercedes we've got our gear selection stalk um, and we've got windows and uh, mirror adjustment there again this is straight from a Mercedes as well because back in the day Mercedes did invest in Tesla so the switch gear what minimal switch gear there is is uh, Mercedes switch gear however on the newer cars like the Model 3 and Model Y you don't get any um, mirror switches they've all gone that's all done via the screen um, you also don't get a glove box switch we've got a switch there for the glove box you don't get that on newer cars um, so they've taken away all the switches and everything is controlled via the screen and there's one advantage of that is that you can add new switches so let's just go into a setting uh, I don't know let's say um, vehicle so here we have software switches so some of this some of these options have come uh, at a later date after the vehicle was built so um, obviously because they control the software and they um, stream over the air updates down to the car if they want to introduce a new function they can just add a new software switch into the car and you're not limited by a physical button somewhere on the dash like you are with other cars it does mean these cars just get better and better with age and these older models like this particular one uh, doesn't feel any uh, worse than the very latest more expensive cars so as an example i'll put up on the screen some um, images of how this interface looked when the car was new obviously well before i owned it and at the bottom here of the screen um, the graphics do look very dated now and uh, if this was any other car you would be stuck with that and over the time particularly uh, over in this case seven and a half years the car might start feeling a little bit dated particularly compared to newer cars that might have this fresher look on them however with the Teslas as I said all the cars get updated all the time uh, and the key thing is here as well free of charge with other manufacturers trying to get them to update your car uh, is a right challenge firstly they will charge you an awful lot of money 
Uh, for example, on a Renault Zoe, if you want the BMS updated, that's basically firmware. But in the battery management system, if you want that software upgraded, because there are newer versions of it that do improve the car, uh, they will charge you a lot of money for that. Uh, a lot of dealers just won't do it. They absolutely refuse to do that sort of work. Dealers that are, I used to get it done free of charge, they're now charging, and I think the average is sort of 250 quid. They want to do that software update because traditional motor dealers, they, you know, they're not geared up to be doing this sort of software update work and uh, obviously the cars weren't geared up to make that job easy but with teslas all of that information just comes down and uh, is properly integrated with the ui here and it just does it with a click and the 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 driver just installs that um, software waits a few minutes the car reboots and it's all done so this particular interface has been uh on the car, uh, I've had this car now for, I don't know, seven, eight months, something like that. Um, but this look has been here for a while now, and indeed there is a new version about to download on this car, which has prompted me to make this video before this interface changes. So up here, we've got the new version 11, I think that is, anyway, everyone's been getting that this Christmas, which is the new interface where these buttons will change and you've got little tiles you can drop down and customize it a little bit but yeah the whole interface is about to change again um, and it's great to have a car of this sort of age where for free of charge you get these um, sys the software updates that completely update the look and feel of the car so this old car here just um, continuously improves refreshes feels modern and uh it feels just like a newer car so it doesn't you know as a driver i feel i don't feel too hard done by by driving a car an older car compared to some of the newer ones um okay this one is a uh, a pre-autopilot one so it doesn't even have a camera up here it's got no cameras over the, around the sides it doesn't have any self-driving doesn't also have any um, adaptive cruise or front collision warning or autonomous braking or any of that but I'm not too worried about that um, I very rarely use um, autopilot when I've got newer Teslas in um, I prefer to drive myself to be honest um, but yeah certainly if it wasn't doing the UI um, updates and this car had the same look and feel as what it did back in 2014 when it was made I really would feel like I was driving an old car so an update that just came down to this car uh, only um, a week ago or so was the ability to add um, waypoints so up here we can now press plus and add waypoints into the um, sat nav and the update that's about to come on improves that further and allows you to adjust waypoints um, and reorganize them should i say so um you know the, as i said the car improves with all these updates uh with a normal vehicle from the traditional motive manufacturers just trying to get a sat nav update uh is near on impossible and even a map update a lot of them charge 50 60 pounds just for the update but then if you want the dealer to do it themselves uh, and some of them you can only get a dealer to do it they're charging 150 200 pounds or so because they're going to charge an hour to two hours labor um, and it's just hugely expensive so of course no one ever bothers and they your sat nav gets more and more out of date as the car ages and generally is pretty useless so of course everyone uses a phone nowadays probably use google maps on their phone and pretty much ignores the sat nav in the car whereas with teslas okay they haven't been bang up to date because it's taken absolutely ages to get waypoints installed but anyway the mapping and the data behind that is constantly being updated and uh, it, it just retains that full functionality and obviously as i keep saying improves with age so anyway what i'm going to do now is install this new update 
and uh, it's going to start in two minutes. I've got to get out of the car, shut the doors and allow it to do its thing. But I'll come back to you probably in a day or two's time where I've got used to this new interface and uh, tell you what I think. So here we are, it is now done that update and I haven't experienced a, a whole new um, user interface update like this before. Uh, so we've got back in the car after it has um, done its thing and we've got here on the screen uh, introducing software version 11. Tap to see what's new. So at the bottom here, new customizable bottom bar. All of this has changed. New temperature quick controls, that's all new. And yeah, that's it. Now we've gone back into the um, normal operation. Uh, looks like it's doing a new update. Oh, it's downloading a game. So yes, there's more stuff going on. Even this screen has changed. The All the font has changed. I think all the font is smaller, actually. Um, but yeah, uh, certainly all of this is very different. I know a lot of people are quite negative about this online already. The Model 3s and Model Ys have had this new interface earlier. The Model S and Xs have uh, been you know a sort of week or two later uh, and people don't like change um, and uh, to be fair on first looks I would look at this and think mm, doesn't look so nice but as I said I'm going to get used to this for a little bit um, before I give my opinion um, but yeah the main thing is it is nice to have change and have these these older cars updated in your main dash um, your main instrument binnacle up here on the model s and x's also changes um, so if i just put this into drive um, this is an older car without autopilot so it does still retain the um, instrument cluster well the digital instrument instrument cluster there in the middle uh, which personally i prefer um, the newer cars will have the visualisation of, of the traffic and objects around you. But this looks very different to what they did when uh, the car was first launched, which I'll put some pictures up on the screen. Uh, and indeed, since I've owned this car, I have seen an update which has changed very slightly the look and feel of this uh, display up here as well. So it's been 24 hours now since I've installed this new version 11. Uh, which is the new user interface. The main difference is the uh, shortcuts down the bottom have changed, the menu system has changed, and you now select what app you want. And you can drop these down and have four along the bottom. So you choose what four goes along the bottom. And then over this side, you've got the last apps used. So if you're using all four, you only get one on this side. Um, and here I've got Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Rear, camera feed and uh, telephone so yeah that's the main difference and we've also got color um, personally I think the old sort of mono um, format was nicer I think color makes it look a little bit cheap um, but anyway uh, there's other differences we've lost the seat heaters either side so there's no shortcut to get to your seat heaters what you have to do is um, bring up the menu where you've now got the seat heaters there. Uh, one thing they haven't got right with that is by doing that you've turned on the heating and a lot of the time you might just want the seat heaters on without the heating so what you've now got to do is turn the heating back off but a lot of people are complaining about that and the lack of the shortcut along the bar at the bottom so that will get changed but that's the key thing with Teslas is they can uh, down, you know, the, the over-the-air updates come down and your user interface can change. Sometimes they don't get it right, sometimes they make mistakes like that, but at some point another one will come down and some of these things may well get changed based on uh, user feedback. Uh, I have noticed all these menus have changed slightly, mainly the fonts got smaller. It's just refreshed the look, uh, but I did notice undercharging the um, there was a bug when you scheduled your 
um, nighttime charge in my case to take advantage of the Octopus Go cheap rate um, electricity in the middle of the night. There was a bug where it would only charge a 16 amp. Um, seems last night it charged a 32, so that is finally being fixed. Um, so yes, that's a nice thing of having a software driven car is these things get fixed. This particular one has taken a long time for Tesla to sort out, but they have done it and it's done it without a visit to the garage and it's done, the fix has come down obviously for your charge as well. So this Tesla now, even though this is a, a, a seven and a half year old car, it now has exactly the same look and feel as um, a brand new Model 3 um, because of these over the year updates. So um, it might seem a small thing, but having a software powered car like this and majority of the functions on the touchscreen does mean that the car evolves and does get refreshed and does feel like a new car a lot of the times. You get in and you've got new features, new look and feel. Um, and it's a feature on Teslas that often does sort of get uh, overlooked or ignored. So that's it for this video. As always, if you have liked it, please do click that thumbs up button on YouTube because that really does help. And uh, do comment or ask questions in the comments box below. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching the video. This channel gets small viewing numbers. So to get the video noticed in people's feeds, YouTube favours videos with what they term engagement. And that basically means comments. So please do comment on the video. Do ask me questions. Tell me what you want to see next. Also hit the little thumbs up button if you found the video useful or you liked it. Do subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button and then press the bell to be notified when new videos get uploaded. Also have a look at the back catalogue of videos. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of videos on the channel already. And also use the search function to find videos that you might find interesting. Thank you very much.